I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And tonight we have a lot more information related to those missing toddlers, the Cal City toddlers, Orin and Orson West. It was big news here last night, but throughout this program, the next two hours, we're going to give you a lot of information about that case, what we know, what we don't know, what prosecutors are saying, etc. But let's begin here. Because mom and dad, they adopted these two children, now charged with their murders, became very real for them today as they were handcuffed and brought into court for their first appearance. Take a look at some of the video that uh, KERO, our affiliate, got for us out there in Bakersfield, California. That's Jacqueline West uh, right there. She's the mother, and there is the father still have masks on, so I still really don't know what they look like. Because when these toddlers were reported missing by mom and dad, they wore masks at their um, press conference because we're in the midst of COVID. Obviously, there's still issues in, in the courtroom, but um, you could see it in their eyes. It is real tonight. It is real. It is the rest of your life behind bars. That's what you are facing, the potential. There's potential for that. There's a still a lot to get to. So let, let's begin here. Vanya Patino. Uh, she's going to be on the show a little bit later tonight. You saw her here uh, last night. She's a great reporter with KERO in Bakersfield. Uh, she has the latest for us in this case. We now realize that the search for the boys began after the real tragedy had already occurred. Bakersfield Police Department Chief of Police Greg Terry adding this is not the outcome they wanted. Meanwhile, Kern County District Attorney Cynthia Simmer announcing Wednesday they believe the two toddlers died back in September. Three months before their adoptive parents reported them missing. She adds a grand jury trial began last December, a year into their disappearance, where more than 50 witnesses testified. The Kern County Grand Jury indicted Trezell and Jacqueline West, the adoptive parents, for the murder of Orrin and Orson West. In total, both adoptive parents were arrested on two counts of second-degree murder and two counts of cruelty to child, one for each kid, and a false report of emergency. Naturally, the first two counts carry the most time in state prison, murder. It is charged as murder in the second degree. That carries 15 years to life, but with two victims, the potential penalty or the maximum possible penalty, uh, if convicted, is 30 years to life. The court documents show that Tracell and Jacqueline West committed a crime that, quote, involved great violence, threat of great bodily harm, or other acts disclosing a high degree of cruelty, viciousness, or callousness with the meaning of California rule of court, end quote. But since the beginning of this case, the community has asked the question, where are the boys? And that question is still unanswered. Is no. They have not been found. However, I would like to emphasize that uh, the fact that law enforcement have not found their bodies does not preclude a murder prosecution. Simmer as there have been many so-called no-body homicides successfully prosecuted, including in Kern County. The fifth count talks about the falsely reporting of an emergency. During the initial covering of this case, we did hear from the adoptive parents when we asked them for their response to being accused of the boy's disappearance. That's understandable. I would think the same thing. Yep. I mean, that's exactly the point. And if we can find our, find our babies, then guess what? That's, that's no. And that's all I want is to find a babies. Now that officials believe the boys died three months before they were reported missing, the question of if they were ever in California City remains. And that's something we're going to answer during the trial. Now, that indictment, there was another clause in that indictment that I want you to take a look at because it could tell us a part of the story and some of the potential evidence in this case. Circumstance in aggravation. It is further alleged that the defendant, Trezell West, the father, and Jacqueline West, the mother, induced others to participate in the commission of the crime or occupied 
a position of leadership or dominance of other participants in its commission within the meaning of California rules. What does that mean? What exactly does that mean? Induced others to, to, to participate in the commission of the crime? Or use a position of leadership or dominance of other participants in his commission? They are alleging here that there are other people involved in the murder of these two little boys. But no one else has been charged. We've got to figure out what this means. That's why I'm bringing in the think tank tonight. Joining us in the Bronx, New York, criminal defense attorney Renee Hill, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, family law attorney Jennifer Brandt, and joining us in Los Angeles, California, attorney, trial consulta, consultant, Dina Sayegdal. Uh, great to have everyone here. I'm going to start with Dina. Uh, welcome to the show, by the way. You're in California. This is a California indictment. Am I reading that right, that this circumstance in aggravation, that there are other people involved in this crime, that they were either induced or dominated and led into the commission of this crime involving these two little, little boys that were murdered? You're reading it right. And the district attorney said that it is possible they may bring other charges. She wouldn't preclude that. So we'll see what happens there. But it makes sense in terms of how much they actually know. The fact that they know that the children were killed are three months before the disappearance does show that somebody was talking to them. And it makes sense. It could have been somebody who was involved in their death or in covering up the death. So the fact that they are alleging that aggravating factor in the pleading makes sense. Now, the aggravating factor is in the murder counts. So I'm reading that to be directly related to the murder. This is, this is shocking. I mean, Renee Hill, tell me your thoughts about this indictment and what could be going on either behind the scenes or somewhere else. The, the other thing I looked at here, and, and I don't know if I'm reading too deeply into this, and I could not imagine this, and I don't want to imagine this, that using a position of leadership or dominance, there's four other children in that house. I can't imagine, Renee Hill, that these parents somehow made these other kids take part in the murder of their little brothers? I couldn't imagine. That, that can't be right. That can't, I hope that's not right, Renee. Yeah, I, I pray that that is not right either, Vinny. But what it seems like to me is that there is an individual or, or other individuals who have gotten themselves into some other trouble um, have been arrested for something else unrelated to this matter and have decided to try to dig themselves out of that situation by providing information in this particular case. Because when we have these cases, especially where a body or these bodies are not recovered, and this investigation has been going on for quite some time, it's going to be a circumstantial case. And a lot of times the leads will come from other people who start talking, and it's usually people who have gotten into trouble and they're now looking to play a card to get themselves out of it. So I yeah. think someone has provided information to the prosecution to get them to the point where they are now. Well, Renee, you mentioned circumstantial evidence, but at that press conference, it was kind of, she just kind of threw it, it in there. It sounds like She said direct, a, a combination of direct and circumstantial evidence. So Jennifer yeah. Brandt, I think of direct evidence. There's, you know, a few different kinds that I believe are direct evidence. Some people have different definitions. But to me, it's an eyewitness to the crime, I see the crime, a video of the crime, or some level of a confession or admission would be direct evidence. And the admission could be to police, the admission could be to maybe another person. So, Jennifer Brent, are, are these pieces fitting together that we believe direct evidence, other people involved, that someone may have told investigators exactly what happened to these two little boys? You know, Vinny, when you talked about the other children in the house, that's exactly what I was thinking when I read about those 
charges, the, the aggravating charges, um, because it, that sort of makes sense. Um, no one else has been charged and they wouldn't charge necessarily these children in the house, but they could get information from the children about what went on um, and maybe find some direct evidence in the household that would help link this, you know, or, or end up having these charges against the parents. Um, see, to me, that seems to be the most obvious way to go is that the other children were somehow involved or knew about what was going on. The only thing that's interesting though is that the parents haven't been charged with any other charges related to those children, whether they abused them or mistreated them in any way. We don't hear anything like that coming out, but who knows, she said there may be other charges being filed. So I guess it's a wait and see kind of game. And, and Dina, you know the geography of California a lot better than I do, but Cal, we, we refer to them as the Cal City Toddlers because um, Trezell and Jacqueline West reported them missing in December of 2020 in Cal City. But they had just moved there. They were only there for a few months. Before that, they were living in Bakersfield. And I believe they were living with his family, so maybe a, a grandmother, some aunt. I don't know who else was in that household. But I do remember the investigation was being led at the end by Bakersfield. So what are your thoughts about the time frame? Because they're also alleging in that indictment that this murder took place not in December, but sometime in September. Between the 1st and the 30th is the, the window that they've put in the indictment. Uh, what does that tell you about what may have happened to these children? And, and she was kind of admitted that it's possible that the children were never in Cal City, that they because of that fact that they had moved there. I mean, Bakersfield is a much larger city. It makes sense that they were the ones that were leading the search. And they're both in Kern County, so the DA is the same for both of them. So to that extent, it doesn't really matter in terms of what kind of indictment was gonna be. But I imagine when the trial comes, that will be the facts. They're going to have to show, you know, three months prior is when this crime was committed. So whether or not the children ever made that move with them or not, you know, we'll find out the prosecution's theory on that. Now, the other thing that's in the indictment, Renee, that is significant, it's not first degree. They're not alleging premeditation. But there were other parts of that indictment, again, with these circumstances and aggravation, where they're talking about uh, it was done It was done with professionalism. There's other, some strange language in there, but it seems like it was more than just some sort of an accident here. It's, it's second degree, but it's not premeditated. What... What should we read from that? What, where does that lead us to? Like, how do, you, how do you kill a child, but it's something that you didn't plan to do, but you kill two of them? That, to me, that doesn't make sense. It, that's something that's really hard to reconcile with, but you know, perhaps we're going to see something along the lines of an ongoing um, level of abuse that ultimately led to their death, that perhaps, you know, they didn't intend for a death to occur, but they right, were but, but, using but, but, that. You know? If it was one child. It's but for both for, of them, for, I understand, and I agree with you. both to die, and, and it's not, pre I don't, I can't put that together yet in my mind. I can't put it. I think so, there's a lot here, Vinny, that the prosecution is keeping under wraps. Oh, there's that a ton. They feel very, that they feel very confident about with their case and that they haven't disclosed to us. So it's a little, it, it, to us, what we're hearing right now makes it really difficult to, to understand a lot of the charges in the indictment. But from the way the prosecutor spoke at that press conference, I feel like she has a lot in her, in her uh, arsenal there that she's going to bring to this trial. Now, here's the other part that's a little bit of a disconnect for me, uh, Jennifer. If, in fact... There are other people involved or another person involved, and they're cooperating. That cooperation has not led to finding these children, has not led to recovering their bodies. So how, how does that make sense? Well, again, I mean, we don't know. We don't know what the other person or people knew about this crime or how much they knew. They may have known that something happened to the children, that the children were murdered, but they may not know where the children were ultimately, their bodies were disposed or 
if their bodies are still even intact or around. I mean, there are so many things that could have happened to these little children. You know, it's just terrible to even think about it. But um, I guess we will we will ultimately hopefully find out, you know, for the for the biological parents and anybody else who cares about these children, at least to have some closure on what happened and where these bodies are. Absolutely. And next hour, we are going to learn a lot more. Uh, we're going to have a member of the biological family with us, local reporters with us, our investigators. So we're going to dig more into the story next hour. This hour, Renee, Jennifer and Dina staying with us. When we come back, there was a verdict today here on Court TV. Big verdict in the botched raid at Brianna Taylor's apartment. We'll show you what happened and we will get reaction. We've got Julie Janae live at the scene. We're also going to speak with Brianna Taylor's neighbors. Don't go anywhere.